Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge Welcome to the show, this is episode 61 of the Tech Bytes show Uh, We don't have team today, Uh, this is the episode of the 23rd of September 2011 Uh, And this is a special show we arranged just today after doing uh, episode number 60 60 Option not 16. Uh, we almost approached the uh, the uh, end of the first year of the show, and we thought it would be quite uh, useful and topical to cover uh, particular topics, making entire you know shows about them. One of the things we've been planning out for several months, and I've been speaking to uh, Sebastian, our guest, uh, about it, uh, is doing a show about the Giga, which is one of the distributions derived from or derived, or maybe a bit of a sibling of uh, of, of, of Andriva. Uh, that's the uh, distribution I, I believe he's going to talk about and explain to us first what it's actually supposed to achieve, how it was born, conceived, how it's managed, and so forth. If uh, if you can uh, introduce yourself, Sebastian. <laughs> okay. Um, I my first audio cast. Never done this before. I um. I'm all, I I don't know that much about Magia because I only like found that about when everyone else did pretty much. But I I have got in I have become interested. I'm quite interested in it as a project, and uh, that's what I'm gonna explain about, I guess. I believe you are enrolled in the project so far. I know we we don't discuss about you know personal details. I don't think it matters. Uh, we don't tend to concentrate on people's individual life or something on the show, but I, I think you're all professionally uh, as far as the kind of the internet or at least the professional activity uh, as far as Linux is concerned is you promoting the uh, the Magia project, especially in the English speaking world and maybe in the UK, because uh, for those who don't know, uh, Mandriva is derived from or it comes from uh, the, the, the connection between Connectiva uh, Connectiva and, uh, and, and Mandrake back in the days and uh, it got loads of French roots uh, and some of them like in Brazil because of the other company. Uh, I think currently it's owned by a company based in Russia actually. Yes, I know Ma- yes Mandriva has been bought out by a Russian company called Rosa Labs I believe it is yeah. and they were bought out because well last year we had the, there were the rumors on the internet that that basically Mandriva would disappear as a distribution and it wouldn't uh, be around anymore. And there were a lot of rumors which didn't really help Mandriva as a company because they, they've already had other problems over the years, like um, being sued over the old name called Mandrake for some reason and that kind of thing. And all at a time when Ubuntu started to hit off as well, in like 2004, 2006, that kind of time, mm-hmm. and so they've had. I mean, they've been around since like 1998, I believe it is, and they've, they've at one stage they had most of the users for desktop Linux, I believe it was, a bit like Ubuntu is has them now, most users, but they had a lot of they had certain company problems and some community issues. I'm not sure exactly what, and. Then uh, last year they were, as far as I know, they were losing quite a lot of money and so they needed to basically uh, get a new investor, which is this uh, Russian Rosa Labs. And some and some of the um, people who used to work for Mandriva either lost their job or they quit Mandriva. And some of them decided that they would start a fork of Mandriva called Magia. Mm-hmm. Would you define it as a fork, precisely uh, based on the uh, conventional definition of fork? Because I know it's one of those things where people uh, have a bit of an argument. Is it a fork? Is it a branch? Is it something that works in com- 
cooperation with the other thing. Uh, would you define it as a fork of, uh, of from the website itself? It says on the website itself. I'll just read it from the website itself. Madir is a fork of Mandriva Linux, supported by a not-for-profit organization of recognized and elected contributors. Further than just delivering a free, secure, stable, and sustainable operating system, the goal is to set up a stable and trustable government to direct collaborative projects. And then there's a link to the original um, announcement. Which uh, is quite long, so I'm not going to read that. Yeah. I think. But I, mean, I was wondering because I know one of the uh, thing that I saw recently, I believe one of the Russian employees of Mandriva, one of the prominent employees of Mandriva, and actually also a former person who used to work in Mandriva and moved to Red Hat and now works in the Fedora project. I don't want to mention by name. Ah, yeah, ah, ah, yes, like yeah. it's uh, like yeah, it let's, says. Let's no. not mention names to say I don't want it to be a personal thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I know what you're talk- I know what you're talking about. I just but on the like, original app from that, yeah. Because yeah. the so Edge IT was lick, um, yeah, it's because I mean, Edge IT was liquidated or whatever it says, and that's basically why the site. And he, uh, the the claim was that Mandriva could not quite be trusted. Now, I think Mandriva was uh, passed in terms of so-called ownership to a Russian company, partly because the Russian government had some uh, contracts with the company. I, I knew from back in 2006, 2007, when I wrote a great deal about Linux, I knew that the Russian government was using Mandriva on the server side as well. Uh, and I believe they had some distribution there on the, on the desktop as well. So they had a certain dependency on perhaps contracts with Mandriva. And maybe the way to carry on with these contracts was to basically take what's left of business or what's sustainable, what's actually uh, possible to sustain given the, the, the income that they had, and pass it to somebody who's closer to Russia. That, that's that's a theory that I have. No, I'm not quite it's not exactly sure. A theory, but I, I'm not I'm not quite sure about that. But but I know that somebody told me who used to use Mandriva for many years, who like uh, sort of got me into it as well when I wanted to try it out. But I already knew about Mandrake and that it was a good distribution. But he basically told me how they had like a big Brazilian uh, uh, customer and. So, like, that's where they were getting some of their money from, or, or a lot of it. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I mean, back in the but day, they, 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 Mandriva has survived as a company and a, a, a distribution. They've been through some very hard times, but it's it's a survivor. It's still here. It's still um, around. It's okay. It's changed now because of different uh, a new new investors. The those are labs, for example, they've got a new. Menu. They instead of using the normal KDE menu, they put a menu in to Mandriva, which is like, um, well, it's a bit like Unity or GNOME Shell in a way. Yeah. If you if somebody tries it, they'll who's tried all GNOME Shell and Unity yeah. though as yeah. well, they would know what I mean. Yeah, I I spoke to a friend of mine today uh, a few hours ago, actually, Jimmy. He, uh, it's interesting. The guy, he's a, he studies computer science, but he's pretty new to Linux. So I'm actually introducing him to, to an extent and show him, uh, uh, some things and how to use that. Uh, and he was trying the new Ubuntu and doesn't really know things by the brands because he doesn't keep track of Linux news. But when he approached the new Ubuntu, he saw a new interface, which he wasn't expecting. And I asked him, what do you overall think about it? And his thoughts were, you know, it's better. Uh, and that kind of concurs with what I, Heard from the uh, about the wife of uh, of team. I yeah yeah. I've, uh, I've, but mostly people who are kind of not very hardcore Linux users who've used KDE or GNOME and stuff for a long time. They 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 quite like it. It seems to me. Uh, and you you mentioned they they basically have their own menu as well. I'm just wondering why. But I think one of the issues they've had so far, uh, distro, distros in general, uh, is the profitability. It's not it's not that it scales a bit differently because if Especially, I, I heard a complaint from, uh, well, I, I don't want to mention names again, but a person who worked for Mandriva was complaining about, uh, Canonical's complaint that he couldn't make money from the desktop. Uh, and his complaint was, when Canonical entered the market and gave away Ubuntu for free and did the whole business thing, uh, they kind of devalued the, uh, the distros of Linux. It made it very hard for people to sell it for money, uh, because they gave it away for free, they gave CDs and everything else, and, uh, and I think this is what kind of deflated some of the market for existing, uh, you know, people in Brazil, as far as I know, also many of them use Debian-based distributions now. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I think Debian, I think Brazil, 
uh, be- because I, I know some people from there, and they seem to favor Davian for whatever reason, and I believe that in the schools, when they had the deal, they, uh, I think the plan to put uh, 52 million students on 